Okay, shall we talk about a consumer products company, Steve, since we're on the roughly on the subject? Let's do it. Good, that's about all the value I can extract from that uh, particular bit of information from Paul. Um, if you want to know what his thoughts on this are, by the way, drop him an email. He'd love to hear from you. Uh, or find him somewhere on social media. Um, Diageo, uh, which is probably, I think we're both agreed, one of the UK's best consumer products companies. It's a stock that we've talked about on this show before. I think most recently I was saying buying it was indefensible at a time when it was trading at a PE ratio roughly similar to Google. Uh, and I stick by the thought that I would struggle to buy it at a similar PE ratio to Google. But um, I, this came across my radar this week because I saw it come up as being at or near a 52-week low. And when you see good products and you think they're over, uh, good stocks, sorry, and you think they're overpriced, worth being open to the idea that you would buy them at a lower one. Uh, and so 52 week low on Diageo shares and there's a couple of reasons why this um, has happened there's a story uh, so I picked this up before their very recent news about the very very sad uh, death of their CEO um, Sir Ivan Menezes who has died after a short illness at the age of 63. He's been with the company since the beginning, I think, for around 25 years, been the CEO for 10 years or so. And despite that quite lengthy career uh, with Diageo, that's a long time to be doing either the same job or at the same organisation. 63 is not a, a terribly long life. We make jokes about a lot of things, and there are some coming in this Diageo segment, don't worry. But this isn't something that we... Um, this is something we treat as nothing other than... Extremely serious and extremely uh, sad. They did have an interim CEO in place at the time that he passed, so things presumably carried on. I mean, he was in hospital, I think, beforehand. But yeah, um, serious note to start off the Diageo thing. That's not the reason shares hit their 52-week low. This happened before that. Here, are, So just some quick numbers then uh, for a moment, because numbers are fun. Um Shares hit 52-week low. Earlier this week, they came down to 3,304p, which is how we measure share prices uh, in the UK. Their 52-week high was 3,960p. So that's down about 16.5% off the high. Why? Well, there are two main reasons, as far as I can tell, they've been coming down all that way. Uh, in January, they launched a trading report or a quarterly update or an earnings report or whatever you want to call it. Um, and their volumes have been falling in North America. Their revenues were up 3%, but that was pretty much all price increases. Volume sales were down. The market did not take this very well. Um, the shares started going backwards. But more recently, the big story is that they are being sued by someone they are working with. Someone called Sean Combs. You know who Sean Combs is, Steve? Did he, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he goes by the name of Diddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Parrot Patel, a.k.a. The Stig, uh, a.k.a. several other things. But that guy, um, who had various kind of collaborative projects uh, with Diageo, mostly in spirits, because that's what Diageo do, is suing them over some of their joint ventures. Um, not much to joke about in this particular section either, but... Here's what it kind of pertains to. Uh, Combs alleges, and um, let's leave it at that as a verb for the moment then, that Diageo had been via its marketing and distribution not supporting that brand properly. Uh, that was his uh, well collection of brands. They'd been marketing and distributing them and concentrating on neighbourhoods that were black, basically, um, or mostly uh, black populated. So effectively, this amounts to an accusation of racism. Um, Diageo is saying this is a business disagreement uh, Combs is saying it's a racist thing he's got various things that apparently various members of staff have said I'm not getting into the he says she says about this uh, but the point is this stock is down 16% while there's a lawsuit going on and from the investing side of things buying things while there's lawsuits going on uh, can be quite a promising way to go. Warren Buffett famously bought American Express while they were in the middle of having a lawsuit, and that's turned out to be a great investment. So, Diageo share price, 52-week low. Uh, any thoughts on any of this, Steve? 
Um, yeah, well, look, it's not a stock that I follow at all. It's not It's not anything that particularly interests me. As somebody who doesn't even drink anymore, uh, it's very sort of like low on my list of things to, to look at. But the reason it was down, the reason I saw when I looked at why it was down was just because its cash flow generation has declined to such a degree. Um I uh, I found that was sort of thoroughly unimpressive, really, when I uh, when I looked through this. I didn't think this was a particularly interesting uh, balance sheet. The other problem that I think they've got, Steve, is being a company that does a lot of, um, well, tries to do a lot in the U.S., if you look at its actual USD revenues, uh, it, it, you know, if you were an American investor looking at this, they would look at this converted into dollars because that's what they will be able to make sense of, Steve. In 2013, they were doing about $28 a share. That's nearly 10 years ago they're only doing 32 dollars a share now because of the way the dollar has gone uh, they're looking to look at this steve and think look eventually i've got to get this back into dollars that's not a massive increase in terms of uh, uh of what the company's making earnings per share steve is up 80 cents for them from six dollars and four to six dollars 88 so here there's there's not a great company for an american shareholder to look at so back into british pounds it looks a lot healthier um if you want to if you want me to just quickly do that steve i mean we're looking at 1828 to 2666 so that's a good sort of what is that 50 60 percent higher uh, that looks a lot healthier uh, earnings per share 397 to 561 i mean that's not a double but it's getting on for a double that is a little bit more impressive but I think the big problem with the British companies, the re- reason British companies look so cheap is that that sort of dollar, uh, sort of denominated version of their earnings is not that impressive. And Diageo falls uh, straight into that bracket. How about you? I look at Diageo and I think it's, I still think what I thought about it before, basically. So I had a look at where it was after that share price had come down. And I think it looks like a good business. They maintain operating margins between 20% and 30%. So that's more Coke than Unilever, uh, put it that way, as a kind of comparison point. So their PE ratio is now down to 21, uh, which is quite a bit cheaper than Coke. Coke's around 27. It's a bit more than Unilever, which is around 16-ish, I think, from memory at the moment. But but okay, if we're comparing it to the thing with similar operating margins, good. Uh, its growth still doesn't really look like it's there. When we were talking about um, Google and uh, other comps to similarly priced things, because everyone was at the point of expecting rising interest rates and thinking everything was out of control with inflation and things that were uh, previous favourites were getting hammered a bit, I'm looking at 10 years of compounded revenue growth and EPS growth of between 3 and 4%. And for a sort of 10-year uh, CAGR, that's factoring in quite a bit. They had a bit of a nice run during the pandemic, and I think people suddenly got a bit carried away with them. But I'm not looking at that as particularly amazing. They've been buying back shares, but at about 0.8% per year, so nothing huge there. Dividends, 2 and a bit percent. You get to about a 3 and a bit percent return. That's probably going to grow because there's a buyback going on. It's I sort of still it doesn't scream off the page at me. This I I mentioned the the point before, but this doesn't look to me like a Buffett buying Amex at half the price type of um, uh, deal. Basically, it looks to me like a lawsuit that might go one way or might go another way. Arguably, it's if it goes badly for the company, it's still kind of grossly overpriced here, even at a fifty-two week low, but. Uh, 21 PE ratio, uh, it looks kind of, it looks sort of okay at these levels, but I think I've seen plenty in the stock market at the moment that's better than okay, is my sort of takeaway. I have one more thought on this, but back to you for a moment. Yeah, I just, I was just going to add to that. Yeah, it looks fine, but I think fine is not, it's not a reason to invest in something, is it? It's kind of like, I, I always feel like the people who uh, invest investing in companies like this are the people who try to uh, just invest in what they use. Uh, and they're like, I like Guinness, so I'm going to invest in this company. Or I drink Johnny Walker, so I'm going to invest in this company. And I don't think that's necessarily the best idea in the world. I know a lot of people sort of misquote Lynch on this, but he was just saying like, use it as a use it as a basis to go out and look at companies, and not buy the ones that are trading at you know 21 21 PEs and have static earnings and forward pH, and see if it's a little bit worse. Which, might be that ROI speed that AI has got it slightly wrong, but I just don't know. It's, it's one of the stocks I can't get excited about, it, and I don't think it would be a good investment. So I don't, I just don't really know why. I, I'd love to hear people who've got it in their portfolios. If, if you've got it, stick it in the comment section and tell me where I'm wrong. But 
tell me where you think this this goes. I mean, it's, it's evidently a growth by acquisition kind of business. So, what is it going to go and acquire to make it make it a good return for you? I'm, I'm not sure. I see it. When Lynch said buy what you use, I assume what he really means is look at what you use because you have a much better chance of understanding it than look at what you don't use. Hmm. This is why I find myself in many cases hopelessly lost on things like telcos and things like cybersecurity and definitely things like AI. I find myself kind of hopelessly lost on at the moment. AI might work its way into my circle of competence, but that's going to be very much it coming to me, right? If it starts showing up in academia or something somewhere, I'll be able to make a decent uh, stab of what I think the kind of likely prospects for that are. But I guess Lynch's reason for thinking you should buy what you use isn't because... Uh, it's always a good buy. It clearly isn't. He doesn't know what you use, but he, I assume, thinks you have a decent insight into how that works, and then you, you'll be in a decent position to make a judgment about it. And in the case of Diageo, it might well be that you're in a really good position to judge that it's overpriced, uh, or that this isn't a big enough discount to be worth it. Or, or I might be wrong, as might you. Um, here's my other takeaway from this, Steve. I know Diageo is not a stock you follow that closely, but you have a a reasonably close eye on Adidas, I think. Um, I'm not owning it at the moment, but it's a stock that you know sort of fairly well, uh, if I've got you right there. Here is my other takeaway from this story, and it's roughly on a par in terms of insight with Paul's people buy things in shops um, story. So get ready for some deep thinking here, right? Celebrities are really annoying. Um, and I'm not saying that Combs is wrong or in the wrong or anything like that here. But companies that get themselves into celebrity partnerships and tie-ups and stuff, it always just seems to be a nuisance for them. Either they're suing you or uh, they're getting themselves into trouble and bringing you into trouble with them. Uh, so as far as I can tell, Adidas has been working its way through any amount of Yeezy-related stuff, uh, which is Kanye West, right? Have I got the right company there? Yep. Or am I thinking of... Not, good, I am thinking of the right company for the moment. All I see when I look at celebrity endorsement, and I get that they're probably important for marketing purposes, because if one bunch is doing it, then they've all got to be doing it. But in the most cases, all they seem to do is create trouble, either because celebrities themselves are useless... Uh, or because you don't get on with them and then you get into arguments with them and so on. And and maybe unjustifiably, right? I'm not attempting to beat up on P. Diddy Patel, Parrick, Puff, man. Um, but uh, it does strike me that the more you get involved with celebrity stuff, uh, the more you kind of, um, the more trouble you attract for yourself, almost inevitably, as far as I can tell. The obvious one for this was Instagram, wasn't it? When they uh, they managed to bring the Kardashians on board, and then it was only a few months down the line that the Kardashians thought they basically owned Instagram and started holding it to ransom for things. So it's uh, it's a strange kind of thing, isn't it? I think it's a a bit of a, a one of those things that when when I guess when you see celebrity endorsement, I, I know a lot of people's default is like, well, he or she is very popular. This will be very good, and this, this, this will. Be. But you've got to think of the pitfalls as well of just what happens if they go absolutely nuts, like Kanye did, and how are they going to get rid of the millions and millions of pounds worth of stock they've got uh, in a in in a way that doesn't involve a large fire, and uh, I just think yeah, it's strange. I I I don't know, Steve. I, I think this. I mean, it doesn't seem like an obvious tie up to me either. Um, this this Diageo tie up, so. I don't know, Steve. I I I just I don't have a dog in this fight, so I found it, I found it really hard to to have any interest on in how it, how how it plays out. Really, would you buy Diageo if it dropped to a fifteen p? Is it on your radar? I'm looking at its chart, Steve, and I know that's a lazy thing to do, but it's been a long term winner for the UK. It surprised me how how far uh, how far it's actually is how, how far it's gone up, but it does look quite wildly overpriced to me. It's been a theme of my thinking today, actually, that there have been some FTSE 100 winners. Uh, I associate it as being a stock full of basically knackered companies that are either big farmers or consumer product, which this is. But actually, this has uh, people have made money uh, by owning Diageo shares, and that's not an accident, in fairness to them. It's a good company, does a lot of things pretty well. It's got a lot of the obvious things that you might want from a, a stock to invest in. I'm not sure it particularly stands out to me. I wouldn't mind uh, owning this, but when I've thought about it before, I've long thought, if I could just get past the price, basically, everything else I'm away. Uh, I don't really mind that it's alcohol stock, uh, I, and that probably comes under sin in some broad sense. I'm fine with that. 
Uh, I don't really mind various other things about it. It's got a big scale advantage. Quite like that about it. The brands are. It's got product leading brands in nearly every category it competes in, uh, and it has had for some time. So, I'm not a massive brand enthusiast, but I do believe in them for for Diageo. In fairness to them, um, now I think of the celebrities thing as just yet one more thing to keep me awake at night. I still think I'd probably rather stick to the um, the ketchup and beans stuff because. I don't think many celebrities are bringing out their, their favourite versions of this. I don't think Kraft Heinz really look for celebrity endorsement. Maybe I'm wrong. They sell most of their stuff in North America. But I, I'm not sure that's particularly their brand of, of famous person ketchup or famous person beans uh, or, or anything remotely what you might call innovative. Apart from I posted on Twitter, they have a, a machine for mixing condiments together now in restaurants. You can have... Uh, the Heinz thing has like random number varieties by the way uh, that, that number of varieties they say is just completely made up uh, for effect because you know, they, they like to be about as factually accurate as we do so um, they are now offering things into restaurants that will allow people to like mix and match their own condiments which is about as far into innovation as I want them to go so I think I'll stick with my uh, with my packaged foods rather than my uh, distillery drinks stuff yeah, I think that's a strange system, isn't it? I'm also I'm, I'm one part looking forward to trying it, and two parts thinking it worked with soda, with things like uh, the was it was it called a Pepsi soda machine where you could essentially get all the different types of Pepsi flavors uh, into into your cup. Uh, I'm just not sure I'm going to spend that much time fanning around with sort of mayo and ketchup to to try and get the, the you know try and recreate fancy sauce from Step Brothers. So the only way I can think that's going to work is it's going to be cheaper for restaurants because they're going to end up wasting less of it or something. But yeah, um, I, I, I'm not sure I particularly view that as that useful. I do quite like the soda machine, though. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of that in places like Five Guys or Popeyes or, or wherever else they have it. We don't have either of those up here, Steve. We just have an Odeon that has it. <laughs> in that case, it's probably quite expensive for you as well. Um, but... Anyway, enough of the UK stocks before we get onto some cinemas and the like. Paul was going to be here, um, and Paul is not here. This is, again, the pitfalls of getting into sort of celebrities. Have whoever thought it'd be a good idea to start a podcast with a guy who's mainly famous on YouTube for, like, wearing burgundy T-shirts or something? Anyway, um, that's uh, another reason for my case against celebrity endorsements. 